This video is going to be one part in my Everything About series, where I cover everything about a certain aspect of web design. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the above the fold. The above the fold is the part of the website that you'll see as soon as you land on the page without having scrolled at all. This term is a testament to the old phrase above the fold when it came to newspapers. So what you would see without having to fold out the newspaper. In this video, we're going to cover everything about the above the fold with web design, not newspapers, including the uses for the above the fold. And there's a lot more than you may think the various designs and flavors they may come in, hopefully providing you with some inspiration, then some common mistakes you might be making to help you create more effective above the folds. And lastly, some statistics and case studies relating to above the folds that can hopefully increase our objective understanding of them. This video will mainly touch on the above the folds with home pages because it's likely to be the most important above the fold on any given website, but we'll touch on other forms of above the folds like on sub pages or even landing pages. Before we talk about uses, we have to realize that the above the fold is premium content space. It's what people see when they first land on your site. And so it's a very important determining factor if they're going to scroll or stay on your website entirely, let alone just the page. So whatever uses it has, it must be very important. The first thing I should mention is that your navigation is probably the most useful part of any above the fold, but we're not going to touch on that too much because it's kind of a separate thing. And I did make a video about this. If you want to check it out, link in the description. With the navigation aside, the primary use of any above the fold section is to tell you what the page is about and to introduce the content. An obvious case of this would be with my website, with my about page. Because of this title section in the above the fold, you right away know what the page is about. However, when you move on to the home page, it gets a little different. If you were to follow the same method for the home page as we did the about page, in the example of my website, you would have a section in the above the fold called home page of the website architect, which is obviously horrible. We don't do this. That's why the home page above the fold is treated slightly differently. For the home page above the fold, it should be able to tell users what the website or business is about, assuming that I've never heard of them before. The way you do this is in your above the fold, it should answer three questions. Who are you? What do you do? And how can you help me? The who you are is answered pretty easily. That's what the logo in your navigation is for. Hopefully you're following the best practices when it comes to the top navigation and you have a logo in the top left, but at the very least, somewhere visible in the top. For what you do and how can you help me? This is where you'll need text in your above the fold. This is usually done with some kind of hero section. You'll see this layout a lot text with a background because it's very effective. It provides you lots of space to have your text and even an image to help sell your idea or make it more impactful. But we'll go into the different kinds of designs next. So as you can see with my homepage above the fold, I answered the who you are with my logo at the top. I answered what do you do with my primary H1 heading and I have how do you help me with the text underneath that saying I make superb budget friendly websites for small to medium businesses who want effective user friendly and beautiful websites your customers will love. But let's get off my website and start looking at some other examples that do this well. NeoReach does this well, run world class influencer marketing campaigns and NeoReach enables world class original influencer campaigns for leading brands in global fortune 500s. Right away, you know who they are, what they do and how they can help you. So they did a great job with their above the fold. Rabbit.com, accelerate your construction finance process. Eliminate inefficiencies, reduce errors, and scale up projects with intelligent financial management software. Easily understood. And now quickly, let's go through the next three. Here's Fountain TRT, which explains themselves very well. Polymer.co here answers three out of the three questions in two sentences and a logo. And here's first phase capital who also does it well. And there's this one who fits the three question technique pretty hard. Digital marketing agency. You can't get much clearer than that. Now let's have some fun with some websites that do this horribly. And maybe it can shed some light to how if we don't do this, it'll make it harder for you to understand the website. We spot, we add, we exit, whatever the hell that means. Here's one that shows a video of some random shit. Now the video is actually good because the site is an engineering firm who designs these kinds of spaces, but without scrolling down to learn that 
you're left guessing with an ambiguous above the fold. Every brand has a story. Let us help tell yours. Now that's pretty vague. That could apply to many different services, but I almost gave them a pass until I looked at their logo. Here's this website that shows you a portfolio piece right away. Bizarre. This above the fold sucks ass. And it's actually their entire homepage too. You can't even scroll. Ironic how they offer professional web design services. Hopefully by now I hit hard the idea of how answering those three questions in the above the fold goes a long way to improving user experience by helping the user to understand what your website is about as easy as possible. But there are more uses for the above the fold than just telling users what the page or entire website is about, like call to actions. One thing you may have noticed in most of the designs I've shown you so far is that they all contain buttons intended for some kind of conversion. That's because call to actions are very effective being above the fold. On the home page, it's usually in the hero section, but on other pages, it's usually in the navigation. A common CTA would be a button to a contact page, but others could be more unique, like this form for a real estate website. Another common use for the above the fold is for promotions or other time-based content. For better or for worse, you'll often see these news updates in the form of banners, product promotions, which unfortunately are usually in sliders, or if it's an e-commerce site, then you'll often see sales going on. This is a very results-driven approach to utilizing that precious above the fold space, but it usually does sacrifice on some user experience in some way, depending on how you go about implementing it. Those are the primary uses for the above the fold. Some other uses might be creating enough of a positive impact that it encourages users to scroll. It's also great financially for ad space as it can generate you more revenue if you place ads here. And it's what users usually see when they first land on a website. So you can use it to craft the kind of first impression you want. Now let's look at some designs for some above the fold sections. Like I mentioned before, most above the fold sections on home pages use this background image or roughly solid color and a light textile. You can also see the color inverted version here. But that's just the most common. You can get quite creative with these sections to set your website apart, especially on the homepage. Here's one example by dual.eu. It breaks the typical block layout for something more visually interesting. And this isn't even their homepage. So you can definitely get creative with your above the folds on other pages as well. Now what you're going to see a lot in these examples I'm showing you is they follow the three questions system. This is because even without the constrictions of having a logo, descriptive heading, and probably paragraph as well, you can still see that you can create great looking unique layouts. This is a critique I've seen in my past videos, and it's that because you follow some kind of rule system that you can't create something unique that stands out, this is obviously dumb, as you can see, you can create amazing looking above the fold sections while still following quote unquote user experience rules. With that being said, because design can be very subjective, it's hard for me to tell you how to design an effective above the fold yourself. So I'll do my best. Let's start with the homepage above the fold first. First, you'll wanna start with your content. That will probably end up looking like a big H1 heading with a paragraph that contains around one to three sentences. Then, because business is like money and results, you should probably add a button to a call to action. Next, you can either go with a dark or light version for the background, like we saw before. Now, I do mean this quite literally. You can only go with one or the other because you'll need contrast for your text to stand out. Whether your text is on a dark background image or a solid white background, you'll need contrast to be able to read the text. Next, you have to pick a layout. I always go with the two column, but the column on the right has nothing in it layout, but you can also use a centered layout like we saw before. Or if you're wanting to push the limits, you can try to break simplicity and go with something that's more complex. You can still create an effective above the fold with this layout, but it requires more design skills. One thing to consider is image versus solid color background, roughly, versus video. What do I recommend? Well, it depends on your goals. If you want your text content to be more impactful in the focus, go with a solid color background. If you want to add more value or create more of an emotional impact or convey a message, go with an image. But if you're looking to be a little more different, stand out and wow chads, go with a video. What do I do for my site? A mix of a solid color and an image. 
You can't deny that with this design, the text is very readable and stands out. And the image on the right provides some extra value and may have an emotional impact. Now I personally think that this image could be improved in the future, but it's not a priority for me right now. As for above the folds on sub pages, I recommend a simple title bar, left or centered aligned. You can use a background image or color, but just make sure that the text is readable. You can even put a paragraph underneath. It adds extra value to the user and it hopefully summarizes what the page is about. Here's a site that doesn't use a distinct section, but because it keeps the titles super consistent across its pages, it makes it very easy for users to understand. Some sites opt out of this uniform title sections and have custom layouts for their sub pages. This is a lot more work, but it can work as long as the user can clearly scan for the page title with little effort. This route would require a little more design experience as you would have to create multiple user experience friendly above the folds. Another note is that you should be including breadcrumbs in your above the folds. Of course, only where applicable, like not putting it on the homepage, for example, but subpages should have breadcrumbs. I will link a NN group article about the importance of breadcrumbs in the description because especially on big websites, people do use them and they do outright improve user experience. So if you can add them in, you should. The last design related thing I'll touch on for above the folds is contact pages. It's my theory that you should and be able to get away with not having a title section on this page because it will allow the contact form to be closer to the top and more easily visible. I think this could possibly improve conversions, but I haven't tested this theory myself or could find anything online about it. Currently on my site, I do have the title section, but in this case, do as I say, not as I do. Now on to above the fold mistakes. The first mistake is homepage specific again. Big surprise is to not follow answering the three questions I've already touched on. Who you are, what do you do, and how can you help me? This goes a long way to creating an effective above the fold for homepages. The next mistake would be to have something called a false bottom or the illusion of completeness. This is where you have a particular viewport on your website. So basically what you can see on one screen where it looks like it starts and ends taking up the entire screen. This ends up creating the impression that there is no option for more scrolling under that section. This is super common with above the fold sections trying to take up as much screen real estate as possible. Here's how the NN group put it. A golden nugget may be hidden below the fold, and users may never see it, unless they know and feel motivated to scroll. It is up to web designers to create designs that guide people towards valuable information by clearly signaling content down the page or even to the side. So to fix this, you should make your above the folds no taller than 80 to 90% of the viewport height. Now you might think that the likelihood that this can make someone assume that the website is over and won't scroll anymore is unlikely, but I encourage you to remember that people are dumb. The next mistake is video backgrounds. I said you can add one to your design two minutes ago, but the reality is that there are good ways and bad ways to use video backgrounds. To have an effective video background, you first have to understand that the average video won't work here. Anything that relies on audio is out. Google Chrome disabled autoplay with audio back in 2017. And then for the video part of the video, it should be simple and almost cinematic. The video shouldn't have any visual distracting scenes in it because you should be overlaying text over the video so you can answer the three questions. If you're going to have a video for all or almost all of your above the fold, just know that you're hurting user experience. Instead of someone understanding your website in seconds, they now have to piece it together in a minute or many seconds based on your video. You need to ask yourself how much loss of user experience is worth them being wowed by your video. And the final mistake is not having enough contrast between your text and your background. It is insane how many people fuck this up. I know from experience, when it comes to having to please clients, you will often have to battle between wanting to see the background image more clearly or hopefully making the background overlay dark enough so the text is more readable. In the end, I always lean on the side of the text over the image. So that's it for mistakes. Moving on to statistics. This is where we look at some case studies to see what works and doesn't work based on some juicy, delicious data. The next study is by my favorite UX people in the world, the NN Group. They did a study in 2010, so 13 years ago from the time of making this video, 
measuring the amount of time people spent on which part of the website. They found that 80% of people spent their time or attention above the fold. 80%. Now, if you think about that for a second, it probably contradicts your experience with how people spend their time above the fold. Because we know people scroll. So 80% of their attention being spent above the fold? That does sound crazy. Well, that's because the study was from 2010, and a lot has changed since then. I think the biggest things that have changed are, one, web design standards have changed since 2010, and websites are more spaced out and generally require more scrolling. Number two, people use websites differently now. Now people are much more experienced with online browsing and generally know how to get around the average website and know what to expect. And three, screens have gotten a lot bigger. With that being said, they did another study in 2018, which is much more updated. And of course, it has different results that align with more of what you might expect. Now, they found that 57% of the users spent their time above the fold, and 74% within the first two screenfuls. They also found, like just in their 2010 study, that the time spent sharply decreases the further down the page you go. The data went into more in-depth than this, providing some other insights as well. But what this means and how it's changed over the years is that instead of people spending 80% of their time above the fold in 2010, people are now spending 81% of their time in the first three screenfuls of space. So three above the fold's worth of height. So people do scroll more now, but they still massively prioritize the top of the page. Like I said, this study mentions a lot more details than what I just summarized, so link in the description if you're interested. And to be honest, I had a hard time searching for case studies relating to above the folds, so I can't list the magical number of three examples, so you're stuck with two. Which concludes this video. If you want to become a better web designer or developer, check out my other videos.